Thanks for watching and get ready for golden adventure with me by evaluating this integral. So first of all, let's simplify this a little bit so we can split this up as the integral from zero to pi over two, sine of x over sine fifth plus cosine fifth dx, and then integral from zero to pi over two of cosine x, and then sine to the fifth plus cosine to the fifth, right? And the cool thing is those two integrals, they're the same simply by using a u sub. So for the second one, for instance, you can use u equals pi over two minus x. Then du is minus dx. This is a standard trick. And essentially you get the integral from pi over two to zero of cosine of pi over two minus x or minus u, sorry u and then sine to the fifth of pi over two minus u plus cosine to the fifth of pi over two minus u and then minus du and then essentially what happens is this minus sign corrects this integral and then cosine of pi over two minus u is sine of u and then those two things will also get switched. So in the end, the value of this is the same thing as the value of this. So in the end, what we have to do is just evaluate two times the second integral. So now let's really evaluate the integral from zero to pi over two of two times just the cosine term and what we would like to do is simplify this a little bit. So let's multiply both sides, so top and bottom, by secant to the fifth power. So let's do secant over fifth and secant over fifth. Yes. And the reason for this, it simplifies. So cosine is one over secant or vice versa, so this becomes two times the integral from, over, from zero to pi over two of secant to the fourth of x. Now, sine over cosine, so time sine, sine time secant is tangent, so we get the tangent to the fifth of x, and then cosine times secant is one, times one dx. And the real reason we need this is to use a u sub, because remember, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So this is none other than two times integral from zero to pi over two of secant squared of x times secant squared of x dx, and then over one plus tangent to the fifth. And by the way, this works precisely because we have the fourth power. I don't think it would have been possible for other powers in this video. So now let's use a u sub. So u would be tangent of x. Then du is secant squared of x dx. So that takes care of this. And then what about this other secant squared? Well, secant squared, if you remember, is one plus tangent squared. So secant squared of x is one plus tangent squared. So one plus u squared. And then after the u sub, what we end up getting is the following integral. So two times integral from tangent of zero, so zero, to tangent of pi over two minus, so infinity, of one plus u squared over one plus u to the fifth u. So once again, this du comes from that first secant squared, and then 
this one plus u squared comes from the secant squared at the beginning. So now what's nice is there's no more trick. We just have to evaluate this polynomial function. So now we're just left with 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus u to the fifth du, and then plus integral from 0 to infinity of u squared over 1 plus u to the fifth And here what we would like to do, so we would like to use another u sub. So uh, v equals u to the fifth to simplify this a little bit. Because first of all, if v is u to the fifth, then u is v to the one fifth, and then du is one fifth, and then v to the minus four fifths dv. And then we just get two times integral from zero to infinity of one fifth v to the minus four fifths dv over one plus v, and then plus integral from zero to infinity of one fifth v to the two fifths, and then v to the minus four fifths dv over um, one plus v. So this just gets rid of the powers of the bottom. And now, what we would like to do, so the nice thing is we have a power of v over 1 plus v. So what we'd like to do now is just to use a fact from gamma functions. So note, so I believe you can use the beta function to prove this. So in general, if you have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the m minus 1 over 1 plus m, or 1 plus x dx. So it turns out this is the same thing as gamma m times gamma 1 minus m, and then pi over myself. So it's pi over sine of pi m. which is true for every m. Now, this is useful here because we can use that for m equals one-fifth, and I believe uh, m equals, so, um, so minus two-fifths, three-fifths. And then we end up getting the following result. Then what do we have? So we still have this factor of two that came from the numerator, and then the five from the denominator. Now the pi comes from pi over sine of pi m, and then we have 1 over sine of pi m, so pi over 5, plus 1 over sine of 3 pi over 5. Now the cool thing is, maybe I'll make another video about this, or I'm sure black pen, red pen also made one. Uh, you can evaluate sine of pi over 5. And you get one half square root of five minus square root of five over two, and sine of three pi over five is interestingly kind of the opposite. One half square root of five plus square root of five over two. So in the end. Our integral can be written in terms of all those square roots. So our integral then becomes 2 pi over 5 and then 2 square root of 2 over square root of 5 minus square root of 5 and then plus 2 over square root of 2 and then square root of 5 plus square root of 5. Now, if you're happy with this answer, you can leave it as that, but we can actually further simplify it. So let's do that. So in particular, let's put this on a common denominator. So what we end up having is 
Let's see. So we do have this common factor of 2 square root of 2. So 2 pi over 5 and then 2 square root of 2. The rest, let's put this on a common denominator. So square root of 5 plus square root of 5 plus square root of 5 minus square root of 5. And then the product, which becomes square root of 20, sorry, 25 minus 5. And then, so square root of 25 minus 5, so that denominator, it's square root of 20, which is 2 square root of 5. And then, that square root of 5, we can put this here, and then the 2, it simplifies with one of the 2's here. So maybe here. And then we get 2 square root of pi over 5 times this expression. So in the end, what do we get? So 2 pi square root of 2 over 5, and then square root of square root of 5 plus 1 over square root of 5, and then plus square root of, square root of 5, and so many square roots, minus 1 over square root of 5. But this we can simplify further because, again, this is a golden integral. So we can write this in terms of the golden ratio. So square root of 5 plus 1 over square root of 5. Well, that is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 times 2 over square root of 5. So 2 golden ratio over square root of 5. And then for the other one, square root of 5 minus 1, square root of 5. So you can multiply top and bottom by square root of 5 plus 1. And then I believe you get 4 over square root of 5. And then square root of 5 plus 1. And you can write this as 1 over the golden ratio. And then we are kind of nearing the end because now what is our integral? It is 2 pi square root of 2 over 5. And then there is this 2 over square root of 5 factor that comes out. But as a square root, square root of 2 over square root of 5. And then square root of golden ratio plus 1 over square root of golden ratio which we can simplify this further. So this becomes, I think, 4 pi over 5 square root of square root of 5. And then phi plus 1 over square root of phi. But remember, by the property of golden ratio, phi plus 1 is just phi squared. And so in the end, what is the integral equal to? Well, it equals to the following. So what is the answer here? It is simply 4 pi square root of square root of 5, and then the golden ratio over 5 to the 3 halves, where again, phi is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. I mean, what a pretty expression. When do you ever see the golden ratio and also square root of square root of 5 in one thing? All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.